but I can't see from my. Okay, all right. So this is VN diagram. You can see here uh, on the vertical axis, this is the G load. And uh, on the aircraft structure, and on the horizontal, this is P. So anything you see orange and red, if you're operating in that region, for example, you're pulling uh, 6G at the speed of 200 knots, and then the structure will be damaged. So gas, what happened to gas? Uh, if you aircraft being pushed, let me say you have a vertical uh, air speed and a vertical velocity, vertical, uh, it's the air hitting you vertically because the gas is uh, mostly vertical air. Then you have increased the speed, then you get, you operating beyond this, uh, Beyond this envelope, then you damage this structure. So I don't, I do not want to go into the detail of this. However, what I'm trying to say is one of the potential cause of the structure failures, such as damage, is the bullets. Next is the uh, evasive maneuver. You may uh, the aircraft may go into evasive maneuver. In the case of near miss. They are not the aircraft, they have to avoid the aircraft and then they have to pull the aircraft and sudden pull the aircraft increase the G. As the G increase again, if you go back and remember your VN diagram, you may already outside the envelope and then you will, the structure will be damaged. And third, it could be vibration. The vibration can caused by uh, failure of component. If you have problem with the engine, you probably uh, have ruptured the turbine disc or you're losing the turbine blade. In fact, you maybe lost some part of the propeller and then you will experience excessive vibration on the aircraft and then that vibration may also cause damage on the structure. It happened when the 380 flew for the flight test to for flutter testing, and when they reached to point mark 92, they have found severe vibration, and then they abandoned the test. They they stopped the test and flew back the aircraft to the to their base. Then they inspected the aircraft. They found there are chunk of the part in the area around the main linear gear has broken off. So that broken off has caused severe vibration and up they had to stop the flutter test. Propeller engine failure I have explained to you. Flutter is imbalance of mass, imbalance of mass in the structure you may and also in the aircraft may you may install modification with certain component installed on the aircraft and that also can cause vibration and flutter on the wing and you may also have repair on the wing which cause also mass imbalance especially when you repair the control surfaces so the flutter is one of the cause can damage the aircraft structure. There are cases where because of flutter, uh, the aircraft uh, wing broken off. You see a video in YouTube, there is F-117. Start fighter has completely broke off the wing because of the flutter. And heavy landing, one of the common uh, event uh, because of the weather, maybe you experience the aircraft experience wind shear as they get close to the ground. The wind shear, the wind change direction, that's what we call wind shear. The wind slam the aircraft into the ground, so that can cause heavy landing. Or the, or the uh, error in the maneuvering the aircraft. The aircraft may have to come fast and short run or runway, so end up you slam the aircraft on the runway, that also can be heavy landing. So that also can cause a major damage to the structure. 
Bird strike is not a common uh, problem uh, because there are birds flying around. In fact, the aircraft structure has been designed to withstand uh, around seven pounds of birds. And still, uh, that is average birds. Sometimes the birds are bigger and there are many. And as they hit the aircraft, it can cause severe damage to the aircraft structure. And this has always happened. It happened uh, frequently on the aircraft, uh, aircraft, and that's why there's also uh, uh, some uh, equipment, e equipment installed around the airport to prevent uh, the birds to come in into the airport area. Lightning strike is another common uh, uh, problem as aircraft flying into the air and they also may encounter uh, weather and they also build up the static charges. They also been lightning. Lightning can hit aircraft anytime. There are system to prevent the aircraft uh, from being totally burned by the lightning. However, they are still uh, give, uh, they still cause uh, some damage, which is significant, uh, which have to be repaired. Most of the lightning strike damage, uh, um, at minimum, they, they, you can see they just like pitted uh, pin hole, uh, something like uh, someone punch the skin with the with the pin. So those are pitted damage, and also you can see discoloration on the skin. So this color discoloration mean that already the skin has exposed to heat, and the area strength is reduced because the tempering condition or the material at the area has changed. They also damage on the ground uh, where you have operating the aircraft on the ground. There are many things come into the aircraft. There are cargoes, catering, refueling, pauser, uh, tow, tow bar, tow truck uh, for aircraft which are not uh, with, with, with uh, aircraft landed at the airport with no gates. They also have mover stairs. Uh, those are the uh, potential cause of the uh, uh, damage to the structure because all this equipment may hit the aircraft structure, which is quite a common uh, problem for this truck hitting the aircraft. Environment, obviously environment is something we can avoid because we are operating in the area we have moisture and it's worse if you're operating near the sea because there is a moisture containing salt so salt is good electrolyte and obviously it will cause corrosion. So environment cause environmental cause corrosion damage. The material, the material itself is uh, susceptible to fatigue. Like I have shown you earlier on the first week, each material having a, uh, been, have, has been tested and they have shown the trend uh, in the SN curve which the material will, uh, life will be uh, shorter if they are ex exposed to high stresses. So mean they have been damaged during the high stresses and those damage accumulated and that can cause the structure to fail. They normally fail in terms of crack and fracture. And all those uh, uh, events will cause damage. I can see the table here. Is something you you I have promised you can look at it. However, this is just a summary. Turbulence, what kind of damage, emergency maneuver, excessive vibration, propeller, engine, turbine failure, flutter, heavy landing, bird strike, lightning strike, aircraft operation, ground, truck and movable stairs, environment material. So you can see here what is the damage on the on the right here, turbulent, for example, you may have structure crack, some aircraft bend. There are cases where the aircraft, I think China aligned many years ago, they drop into, I think they dropped to 15,000 feet in the, when they landed, the whole aircraft uh, used that bend, bow. Deformation, uh, that is deformation. Reverts failure, you can see reverts uh, hit, missings. Uh, reverts pull out, distortion, buckle, wrinkle, 
every six maneuver, you may also have the same kind of structure damage. And we call all this, uh, uh, they call it structure overload. Uh, vibration uh, normally cause crack, propeller engine turbine failure, the debris will hit the structure, cause puncture. The flutter cause vibration also end up with the crack. Heavy landing could be similar to the structure overload where you experience in turbulence and aversive maneuver. Bird strike is punctured because the bird goes into the aircraft. And I've seen, I've been doing repair on L100, which is a US military aircraft. Uh, the flaps is punctured through the bird swing into the flap and settle inside the flap. So it's very difficult to repair because we have to clean up all those birds things first before we can uh, derive the structure and install a new uh, skin uh, plus some doublers. So it's very messy if you have a uh, bird strike. Lining strike is a burn fitting on the skin heat damage. So there is a, a discoloration. So lightning cause heat and the heat cause structure to fail. So it's just like you burn the structure. Aircraft operation of ground, a puncture, cracks, crash gouges from those trucks, from those movable stairs. Environment corrosion, there are many types of corrosion, exploration, fitting corrosion, and etc. There are many types of corrosion. Material fatigue is fracture and crack. So those are the potential cause or the damage and the type of damage occurred in the aircraft throughout their operation cycle. Question. Okay, next damage assessment. All this structure has to be assessed for damage. There are reports you may receive the structure has been damaged. There are reports where you already have complete uh, damage report. There are reports which do not have much detail where you need to explore further. There are also damage which is only superficial, but you need to go into the inspection in detail expression to determine the extent of the damage. So there are many scenarios. So most of the time, if you've got heavy structure damage, you have to bring the aircraft into the hangar and you have to prepare the aircraft for detailed structure inspection. The photo shows C-130 Hercules major damage. This aircraft has hit a hangar and you can see the nose has damaged and also part of the wing has been ripped off. I was working on this aircraft when I was with the aircraft. So what we need to do when we have damaged the aircraft, you have to bring the aircraft to the hangar. You have to jack up the aircraft to be level. You have to put M on the permanent trestle. Trestle is the support of the structure. And you need to bring the aircraft to as level, as relaxed as possible. I mean there are no area in the of the aircraft structure has been stressed. It's a relaxed condition. No loads on it except on the trestle and on the jacking. Because why? Because we need to see the natural condition of the aircraft structure for us to be able to determine the detail, the real extent of the damage on the structure. Otherwise, if the structure is not uh, in the relaxed condition, in the free condition, you may not be able to see the uh, detailed damage. When you do damage mapping, so it is very uh, simple exercise. What normally that we do, we go to the aircraft IPC, we make a copy, several pages of the IPC, you go to the aircraft, start to take note. When you see the damage, you just put the note there, uh, the area where it has, has been damaged. 
and also explain what kind of damage that you see at the time. Also at the same time, we also need to see whether the damage is permanent, especially when the aircraft has been reported uh, experience uh, heavy landing or experience turbulence. We want to see whether the aircraft is distorted or the aircraft still remain in good condition. Because distortion is permanent deformation and there is not allowed in the aircraft structure, so we do alignment and symmetry check. There are drawings published by the OEM of the alignment and symmetry checkpoint for the purpose of this uh, inspection. That is the inspection to see generally the condition of the aircraft, whether it has been permanently distorted or still uh, or the aircraft still in the condition as per it was delivered from the factory, so it's still good. So we use alignment symmetry check to determine the status of the aircraft after having that major event and which also having uh, badly damaged due to the event. Then once you have uh, completed those uh, damage mapping and damage investigation, we will classify the damage, uh, but we have to refer to OEM structure repair manual, and we classify the damage as major damage, minor damage, repairable damage, beyond repair. Now those are based on the information given in the structure repair manual. The structure repair manual has given uh, will give the detail of the condition or specific area of the structure uh, when it has been damaged, whether it's repairable, not repairable, or consult OEM for repair. Those are the kind of options normally given in the structure repair manual, which we have to determine for each defect that we found, so we can uh, easily uh, make a project uh, projection of the potential uh, repair required, what are the costs and how long the aircraft will be in the hangar to be restored in, uh, for the structure integrity to be restored. Then once we have all those information, we publish a damage report. A damage report which I have shown earlier is uh, every one of these forms been raised for each defect that you found and we compile them if there are many defects found. If you got five, five defects, you can see wing spar broken, uh, fuselage skin punctured, landing gear crack. So each of the main event, you prepare this report and compile them. Then again, most importantly, when you are preparing the report, you should not miss this component, aircraft data, component data, inspection data detail of damage and what is the requirement, what is the requirement on the area. So because these uh, defect reports may go to several places at OM depending on the area or the structure. But they are not like us where we have an airline, we are technical services, one or two person in the technical services of the airline, we work to cover everything but for OEM, they are big, they have certain people to work on certain structure. They have that kind of the uh, luxury to have the engineers uh, to work on every part of the structure, every component, every area of the structure. And also they're receiving hundreds of these reports every every month from all from all the operators and owners of the aircraft around the world. Okay, and then again, you also have to do a sketch for the defect. You have to show global view, you have to show local view, and then you write an email, a memo to the OEM to explain the detailed damage. Okay, 